So here we go. R runner set. Conditions are good, it's in low 60s, it's a little damp and humid, but uh, it's good. And heading the field is number 19, and that is Aili Fiesa from Ethiopia. Aili, predominantly a road runner, he's got a 10k PR of 28.26, and he's turned the gauntlet down. He's opened some daylight here. The uh, American field sitting back, Aaron Gorn is in the pack there, as he's sanctioned. And the fastest man in the field, Philip Nassima, from Kenya. He actually won 1253 for the distance in the Golden Dollar in Rome in 1996. There have only been five Americans ever to break 30 minutes for 5,000 meters. And we are very privileged to have two of them in the field today. That's Matt Tegenkamp and Chris Solinsky. They're joined by Alistair Cragg from Ireland, who's a 1303. Alistair is a three-time Olympian and now resides in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, Sam Chalanga at 1309, who is also the NCAA 10,000 meter record holder with 2709. And Andy Bombolo at 1312. Andy may well be the favorite for this race today. He's the only guy that's had a full track season in Europe. He ran 13-12 at the Houston Zoldermeet in Belgium. And uh, eight days ago, he ran 740 for 3,000 meters in Rieti, Italy. That's great leg speed. So Andy should be a factor if the race is tactical. But the guy at the head of the field, number 19, Aili Fiesa, has other thoughts about that. And he's forcing the pace along. We actually have had some very fast first miles on this course. John Doherty has the mile split record of 4.10. Uh, we haven't been close to that in the last few years, but it is possible to run very, very quickly on the course. The course record is 13.20 by Ismail Karui in 1997, a year when the field was loaded and he beat Khalid Kanuchi uh, by a second on the line. So this race had a very storied history. That year in 97, there were actually 44 guys under uh, 13.45. So it looks like Stam Chalanga, number 15, is taking up the challenge and he's going to try and close down Aeli. Uh, this is also good for Alan Vaughan, who would like a quick pace so that it's going to run some of the sting out of the finishing guys. As we look in the pack, the, the pack is about 14, 15 people behind Aeli and the mile mark is coming up. Aeli has made it really honest and he's 420 through the mile. 4.20 is 13.30 pace. Uh, it's possible to run that on this course. And he's thrown the Gordon lid down for the guys and with the challenge. Sitting in the pack, Alistair Craig, who you may not recognize with the big bushy beard. Uh, he's been growing that for the last uh, few weeks. And it's a very distinctive feature as far as the uh, lead pack goes.
The African runners in the early days were certainly known for their aggressive front running. We are just about to make the turn onto the Point Street for the Point Street Bridge. Uh, we're a little too far with the athletes to get good camera shot, and we're trying to get the lead truck to slow down so we can get them in, in picture. Ayeli makes the turn, followed by Sam Chalanga, followed by Matt Tegenkamp, Alan Braun, Andy Bombolo, Chris Solinsky, Alistair Cragg, Dan Lowry. It's a good field, it's a packed field. Joe Stilling is also in there. Joe Stilling ran 13.34 in Houston's Alder and went on to run 7.49 for 3K, so he's in good form. So it's a great field. Uh, they're closing Ayeli down. He's backed off a little. There were no takers for the pace he was setting. He's just taking a little glance around and he's going to rejoin the pack. Uh, whether he stays with them is another matter, but uh, certainly he made the first mile very uh, honest and worthwhile. Andy Bumblo wearing number four. Uh, Chris Tegenkamp and um, Matt Tegenkamp. The guy is Chris Solinsky in the turquoise vest. They're running for the uh, Nike Oregon Elite track club out of Portland, Oregon. They're training partners. They know each other well. They've logged thousands of miles together on the roads and they will know each other's strengths and weaknesses. So Alistair Craig just edges to the front before the turn. Alistair's wearing a high number. He was late to register number 4587 and uh, Alistair just at the front of the field. Tim Ritchie from the BAA is also in there. It's, uh, it's a tight pack at this point. Sam Chilanga's coming off injury. He hasn't raced all summer. Uh, he's looking good, obviously feeling confident being at the front there. The guys who are not US citizens really have to finish in the first three today to get a payday. Uh, it's 3,000, 2,000, 1,000 for the first three, but with US athletes being able to double dip, it means the open athletes have to finish in the top three individual positions. So Sam Chalanga, Alistair Craig, Chris Solinsky, number two, Andy Bombolo, number four, Matt Tegenkamp, number three. And it's, it's slowed now, it's become tactical. No one wants to take a shot at it from here and they're gonna bide the time a little bit. The two miles split is gonna be considerably slower than the, uh, the 420 that they took it out at, but uh, that's kind of understandable given what's on the line. When there's a US title on the line, it's always uh, something the athletes aspire to and uh, they're gonna take the chances in the last mile, I'm sure. So Alistair Craig, number 4587, the guy with the beard. It's Sam Chilanga, number 15. Andy Bumbelow, number four. Matt Tegenkamp, number three. Chris Solinsky, number two. Alan Braun in number 13. I hope he thinks that's lucky. He's run well on this course. He's had two thirds and a fourth, and he's in fact the most experienced guy on the course. Matt Tegenkamp ran this race in 2008. He made a break mid-race, got about a 40-yard lead, but he was reeled in in the final stages by Anthony Famiglietti, and Pam out kicked him on the hill to the finish. Uh, Matt came back the following year. He was very patient, bided his time, and wound it up in the last K. Matt, of course, is making his long-awaited marathon debut in Chicago in three weeks' time. It's long awaited because Matt is known for his patience and discipline. And those are attitude, uh, attributes which really uh, hold well in the marathon. And we'll be looking to see uh, what kind of time he runs and see if he places him in the top echelon of US distance runners. So Matt Tegenkamp will still have a lot of miles in his legs. He'll be very strong, but pace-wise, he may not uh, quite have the turnover. It has slowed the second mile. The second mile was reached in 9.02, so it was a 4.40 second mile. The guys are chilling, they're watching each other. Uh, Sam Chalanga at the head, uh, just coasting at this point. Um, my guess is that once we turn along the Providence River, well, we've just turned close to the Providence River, but we go on South Water Street, which is the east bank of the Providence River, and I think someone's going to take a shot a bit from there. It'll be, it's about 1,200 to run. Uh, we're on South Water Street now. It's spread out a little bit. Alan Braun edging out on the uh, left-hand side of the picture, just outside of Matt Tegenkamp. Alistair Craig on the right. Andy Bumbelo next to him. Sam Chilanga and Aili Baez are in the center.
So chat, Sam, number 15, he's got great credentials over 5 and 10K. Andy, number four. Andy was beaten on the sprint finish last year by Ben True. So he knows this course. And uh, athletes often come back a second time and win this race. And I'm sure Andy's hoping for that today. Matt Tegenkamp looks good. Wayne, number three. Alan Braun, number 13, looks good. Tim Ritchie, number 51. It's a nice pack, great athletes and uh, tactical at this point. Who's going to blink first? Who's going to make the move? Remains to be seen. We're coming up to a uh, kink in the road. We're crossing the Providence River back onto the West Bank. We're going across the Crawford Street Bridge. And it's usually when we cross this bridge that things start to get interesting. So there's a lot of experience. There's a ton of experience in this pack. And it is Matt Tegenkamp who edges to the front. He's joined by Alan Braun and a little bump there from uh, Ayala Fiesa. Uh, the guys are rolling now. It's not very often that you get that in road races. Uh, Matt Tegenkamp's going to start to wind it from here. He's going to try and make strength count, and he's putting the, his foot down. He's joined by Alan Braun, Andy Bumbleau, and uh, Ayeli Fies is still in there, and Alistair Craig still has contact. These five guys have some separation now from Sam Chalanga. So it's Aaron Braun. Aaron's going to go for home. This is it. The race is on, folks. So it's Aaron Braun, Matt Tegenkamp, number three, Andy Bumbleau, number four, Alistair Craig with the beard tucked in behind. Aeli Fies has been dropped at this point. So it's going to come down to these four. Alistair Craig needs to make the top three for a payday. He hasn't raced this summer, but he's a tremendous athlete. He's sitting at the moment. He's got to take his chances on the hill. Aaron Braun knows that he's got to make it a humming space from here. So he's pressing. Aaron Braun, number 13. Matt Tegenkamp, number three. Alistair Craig, number four, five, eight, seven. And right tucked in the middle is Andy Bumbleau. Andy Bumbleau's got to fancy his chances now. He's got a good finish. He's got track speed in his legs. And he looks very, very comfortable and relaxed. But Aaron is pressing. He's going to try and win this. This race is certainly no give me. And Aaron's put the, the, the pedal to the metal in the last couple of hundred yards. It looks like Alistair Craig is struggling to hang in there. Matt Tegenkamp looks like he's out the back a little. And Aaron Braun is pressing and going for it. He's taking Andy Bumbleau with him. And it's going to be a great race. We're just about to make the turn on Francis Street and go up the hill alongside Providence Place Mall. And it's three guys. It's going to be, it's going to be Aaron Braun taking the, cur the turn first. Aaron Braun from Andy Bumbleau and Alistair Craig. Alistair's a good hill runner, but I don't know if he's sharp enough to go with these guys. So it's Aaron Braun going for home. Aaron Braun with Andy Bumbleau drafting. You've got to give Andy Bumbleau the advantage of this point with his leg speed. Uh, Alistair Craig struggling a little, being caught by Matt Tegenkamp. But here we go, coming up to the three mile mark, and Andy Bumbleau makes a move. It's Bumby with the afterburners coming away. Bumby opens a gap immediately. He's dropped Aaron Braun. Bumby's coming into the finish, it's a 10 yard gap and he looks good. Bumby's going to win this race going away. It looks like Matt Tegenkamp may get Aaron Braun for third, but Bumby's hammering into the finish. It's going to be a winning time of 13.46. Andy Bumbleau and Aaron Braun hangs on for Matt Tegenkamp and Alistair Craig. So 13.49, 13.50, 13.51. Sam Chalanga coming in in 13.59. It's Tim Ritchie, number 51, 14.03. Joe Stiller. 56 1406. Is Aeli Fiesa coming in 149? Chris Zelinski coming in at 1412. What a great race! Great finish from Andy Bombolo. As I said, the guys who run this race for the second time, they know the course, they figure out what it takes to win, and Andy judged that to perfection. He sat and drafted, he didn't do any work until he made his move, and when he made his move, it was decisive. So a great run from Andy Bumble. Tremendous race. This race always is good and competitive, and uh, the, the finish has been extended a little, so it makes it even more interesting.
So we're waiting now for the women. It's, uh, we're at 14.48. We're, we're about in a half a minute away from the first woman cresting the hill. We expect that it could be Molly Hubble. Molly Hubble, Emily Infelt, uh, but the girls in form. And the females are coming up the hill. We can't get over. And it is Molly Hubble. It is Molly Hubble kicking away. Molly Hubble, she lives in Trubbin and she knows this course. And it's Molly Hubble coming away from Emily Infeld. The two favourites bringing it home. Here comes Molly. She's got about eight metres of Emily Infeld. Molly looks great. She's stressed, but she's going to win it. Molly coming in. Molly's going to win it. And the time is 15.29 from Emily Infeld in 15.31. So repeat victory for Molly Huddle. And in third place is Alexi Papas, number 42nd, seven, making her road race debut. So great running from the lead women. Molly Huddle resides here in Providence. She trains on the course, and she was the out and out favorite. She did a great season, finishing sixth in the World Championships in Moscow. She went from there to Zurich and ran the uh, 14.58 5K, which was the fastest time of the year. So she was in great form coming in. So a hometown victory for Molly Harlow and great races on both the men and the women's side. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the race coverage today. It will be repeated and you'll be able to watch it later as a tape delay. But it was a fine race and we're going to crown a new US champion in Andy Bumlow and a repeat champion in Molly Hoddle. So this is Jim Harvey signing off for now.